So um, thanks so much and uh, pleasure to be here today. And I just wanna thank uh, Dr. Isabel Hughes for her leadership in organizing this presentation. Uh, this part of the session is gonna focus on patient involvement in communicating results of patient preference studies. And here's my disclaimer and my acknowledgement as a full-time employee of Alexion Pharmaceuticals. So the topics I'm gonna to be covering today are why involve patients in communicating, when to involve patients in the communication, and how and when uh, to communicate study results um, to patients, uh, patient partners, and um, the larger patient community. So why involve patients in communicating about a patient preference study? Uh, some key points as shown here on the slide are really around uh, ensuring that the way the results are presented to patients um, are prioritized um, to, to meet patients' preferences and needs. Uh, to raise awareness within the larger patient community re regarding the uh, organization of the study, the fact that the study has been conducted, um, and what were the key findings, um, and to ensure that the translations are accurate um, and in plain language. And then finally, to ensure that uh, appropriate dissemination channels are selected and tailored uh, to address the needs of different patient groups and the larger patient community. Um, at what point would one consider involving patients in the communication process? I think it's important to note that kind of continuous two-way communication to patients uh, throughout the entire research uh, process is, is a critical uh, consideration. Um, that would involve here, as you can see on the left side of the screen, and during the design of the study, um, as the previous speakers have already uh, mentioned during the conduct of the study, and then finally in the analysis and reporting uh, period uh, back to uh, the various stakeholder groups. Uh, and how can patients be involved in the uh, share in the communication process? Um, so these are some key points before the patient preference study. Uh, you want to have uh, patients understand what is expected from them and what the aim of the study is. So patients uh, can be very um, important in uh, helping uh, under, uh, communicate what is expected from, from patients and what the aim of the study is in this regard. Uh, communicating during the patient preference study to explain the process of the study, its design, uh, to assist with recruitment, um, and to provide updates uh, between the patients uh, and uh, involved in the study and the patient community at large, and communicating about the results of the patients uh, and in terms of uh, determining how to organize the results in a manner that's responsive to patients' needs and preferences, as well as ensuring that the results are presented um, in plain language. And then finally, at the conclusion, of the study um, in terms of um, getting um, the results disseminated back to the uh, patient um, organizations and um, other members of the patient community. I think one of the key considerations is how to develop um, and decide what content from the patient preference study to share back to patients. Uh, it's not all results. Uh, there, there's, as you have a sense already from the presentations that preceded, uh, there's usually a, a very extensive amount of data that come out of patient preference studies. Um, and the idea is to understand from the patient's perspective, what's really uh, of most interest and importance to them uh, and, and to keep it focused uh, so that this is uh, front and center um, when the results are presented. Uh, keeping it short, five pages or less, um, emphasize the key results up front in the present in the uh, communication, and then describe the characteristics of the patients who participated in the study, um, along with the methods at the end of the uh, of the document. Um, include implications and key takeaways from the study for patients. For example, what treatment attributes patients valued most, and of course. 
for those that are interested in um, include links um, and information about how to access um, the, the full um, study report as well. Uh, another kind of in, very important consideration in communicating results back to patients has to do with the application of plain language principles. Um, that is the idea of avoiding a medical jargon, um, using some um, using shorter sentences and paragraphs, thinking about the layout of more white space, um, using chunking, bulleting, and headers. And these are some of the this accepted techniques for making the information uh, more uh, reader friendly. And then and using some visualization and, and, and images to emphasize or illustrate key points um, or uh, topics. And then the idea is, is when to communicate results back to patient. What is that um, timely uh, point at which to do so? And in general, the rule of thumb here is really once the final study report has been prepared to get that um, patient version out as soon as possible. Um, that might be through a variety of different dissemination approaches, uh, mail, as well as email. Uh, to participants, and then consider a range of communication vehicles, uh, the plain language summary of the study report itself, um, but other um, types of summaries that could be uh, disseminated through social media, presentations at professional conferences, and then patient advocacy organizations. So just in terms of some key takeaways, um, patient involvement ensures that uh, from a communication standpoint that the, the study purpose and methods are described in a clear and accessible manner, that results of greatest relevance to patients are presented and, pre and presented in a manner that is understandable, uh, and that study conclusions represent a valid interpretation of the patient perspective. Um, and the idea then is that patients can then use that information to support discussions with sponsors and regulators uh, to influence uh, how uh, drug development occurs and to assist in otherwise is disseminating study results uh, to other interested parties. So thank you. And I'll turn it over to our next uh, presenter.